back to Suzanne. One thing I love about you is we get together and it's like this like sunshine energy, if you know what I mean. Like, you know, there's few people in the world, like your energy is so bright and just beautiful. And I always like, we, I recognize you across the room and we've been friends for a while, but I love when we say hi or get together because it's that like exuberance, it matches mine. And usually I overpower people in that exuberance, joyfulness. So I am excited today because I know we're going to bring joy and fun to this interview. And you've got some really, really cool things to share with us. Um, Thank you. So, so excited. And you have a book that's been out super successful. We'll talk about that. We'll tell you where to get it. Um, We'll tell you where to find Dr. Suzanne. First, I'll just introduce her uh, briefly. And there's a lot I could say. Um, I always like to start a little bit personal. And I remember probably at one of the mind shares or one of the um, the events, uh, you know, we met. And again, one thing about you that is so evident is your joy, your joy for life, your exuberance, um, the love that you bring. And you fill up a room with that sunshine. And so it's always just a joy for me to see you and to say hi. And it's almost like old friends, you know, when we catch up. And so even though we're across the country and now you're doing some traveling, we'll have to hear a little bit more about that. Um, But you started out in um, we kind of with a a story, which I want to hear more about with your son. I want to hear kind of how you got into this. Currently, though, you are in Wellness Center in Santa Monica, California, and you've been in almost three decades in practice. (laughs) I love it. Oh my gosh. And you look so gorgeous and young that people would never believe that. Um, And you've treated lots of you with allergies, with um, MCAS, which is the mast cell activation, and then some of the mold and environmental things that we both deal with, which we'll talk about as well. So autoimmunity, chronic fatigue, migraines. Um, So you're going to hear some great, great tips. And I could tell you lots more credentials, but we will get into it. Um, Just a little housekeeping. You guys can share this video if you like it. It'll be recorded. You can watch it later. And then, of course, you can see all of my interviews at my YouTube channel, which is just under my name, Jill Carnahan. So, Dr. Suzanne, thank you for joining me, first of all. Thank you so much, Dr. Jill. You know, I just love you. And you're absolutely right. Every time we get together, our energy just kind of like melds together. and We resonate at that same level. And we get so excited about life, but really about serving people and, yes. and talking about all the cool things that are going on, uh, that how, we can, how can we share you know, our strategies and how we can help each other and of course help others. So I'm so happy that I'm here with you, considering that I haven't seen you this whole year. I know, right? We were just talking about how we love, we actually found out we kind of don't mind being alone and we're getting along okay. And we're trying to take care of ourselves, but we do miss, like I miss connecting with you and just seeing you at conferences and stuff. Um, what I love to start with is story. And I'd love to hear your story of like how you got into medicine, how you really got into allergies and environmental toxicity and mold. So tell us a little bit about where, where it all started. Well, you know, I, I basically was a chiropractor. That was, that's my license in chiropractic. And I was a sports medicine specialist for seven years. And then I got pregnant with Cody and I had this most beautiful, beautiful angel baby. Uh, But after about four months into his life, he started having all these symptoms of allergies. Now, this is in the early 90s, like 1994, I should say, 1994. And nobody talked about allergies then. Nobody talked about mercury toxicity. Well, a little did I know, but for a full year, I was nursing him and I had a mercury cracked amalgam filling. Wow. So that was one of the things, the hidden hidden allergies that ended up just totally throwing off his gut and triggering anaphylactic reactions in him. He had skin allergies, eczema from head to toe. Uh, we were in the hospital all the time. I had to carry an EpiPen. And he was one of those bubble boys, meaning like, if he was exposed to a little bit of mold or a little bit of rubber, I mean, that's the crazy thing, rubber. We'd go into a sporting goods store and he'd come out with literally um, a state of a respiratory distress, couldn't breathe. It was super, super scary. And for a mother who's a doctor at that time, I didn't know anything about allergies. Really, we didn't. And, um, and back then we also did you know, vaccinations because we didn't know much about that either. You know. So as a sports medicine specialist, you just don't know about them. That's not what we practiced, right? So I started learning more and more about allergies and mold. Mold was one of his biggest. And I became a mold specialist. And I was very much a helicopter mom. I must tell you, it was very difficult for all of us because I'm constantly have to make his own food, dairy-free, gluten-free. But what ended up happening, he had a cerebellum meningitis. Cerebellum meningitis from an MMR and chickenpox vaccine. And that set me on a completely different path. I quit, pretty much I quit doing chiropractic and started learning more about allergies 
And I was the only chiropractor, my, in fact, the first chiropractor to be involved with and go to the classes at, with the American Academy of Environmental Medicine, which you know really well, an organization for a very long time. That was 1996. Cody was about a year and a half by then. And I learned to be an allergy specialist through AAEM. I begged them. I was the only chiropractor because they don't, this is a medical professional, yeah. but uh, they knew that I was, I was really desperate. So I started doing that and I just went into uh, to allergies and taking care of people f with their environment. The environment is really key. The environment outside and then the environment inside, which is your gut. Yes. So I became a gut specialist, an allergy specialist, and environmental uh, medicine specialist. And I've been doing that since 1996, obviously, but I've been altogether practicing nine, uh, 31 years. Wow. What a story. And you know what I love? This is so common because it's always either ourself or someone we love really dearly, where oh, yeah. we come up against our training and all of us, no matter what background, allopathic or chiropractic or osteopathic or whatever else. And we come up against what we've learned in school and not knowing the answer for this situation, right? Right, and right. Like what else is out there? We got to find the solution. I remember just a little vignette where in medical school, I was uh, the first medical student at Loyola to start an integrated medical club. Like we had interest of, you know, acupuncture and chiropractic and all these things coming into the allopathic medicine and introducing the students to this. So of course I was really interested in that, but I kind of got this name in the school is kind of Jill's the weird one, right? <laughs> like even back in medical school, I was the one who was pushing the envelope and the attendings kind of tolerated me, but they always knew, you know what, she's got some idea that the mind and body are connected or, you know, these, these crazy theories, right? But the funny thing is, is five, 10, 20 years later, almost to a T, all of my close colleagues um, from medical school have called me about a friend, a family member or their own health and said, hey, Jill, Hmm. You know, and they don't say it out loud, but they might say, you know, I used to think you were a little crazy, but now I know the desperation of someone who's looking at someone they care about who is sick. And I'm wondering if you have any answers. And I mean, humbly, I was grateful to usually have some functional medicine insight that they might not have had, but it's over the time the truth wins out. And the truth is when you see wellness in your son or wellness in ourselves or the people that we love, um, what really works, right? Because it's not in a textbook all the time. There's, there's, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that you know, you got to go with what feels right. Just, just like it said, listen to your own voice. And I'm not talking just for doctors. I'm talking about everyone. Right. If it doesn't feel right, whether you have a child or for yourself, you've got to go that a different direction. Really open yourself up because there's so much answers out there. For Cody, after um, I started working on allergies and looking at his gut and changing everything and making sure that we had a clean environment, you know, my first book, the, uh, the first book was the, is the seven day allergy makeover. I, that book is all about Cody's experience and Cody's, wow. Cody's story and how you can clean up your life in seven days, you know, looking at seven different aspects of your life, whether it's your kitchen or your food or your air and your water. I mean, I can tell you tons of things about water, you know, um, and how you can clean up very little bit systematically and you can change your life from the inside out. There's no doubt. So within about a year and a half, Cody became an anaphylactic, very high, highly sensitive child to a very highly functioning child and going to regular school. I mean, I mean he didn't have any uh, mental issues or anything like that, thank God, because I would say that because of the MMR vaccine and chickenpox, he could have become an autistic child, but it stopped at the cerebellum. And it didn't go higher. What I mean is the, um, the toxicity of the vaccine didn't go up to the, his brain where, you know, all the cognitive functions are. It stopped at the cerebellum, which is a little bit lower brain. And so he wasn't able to walk. I mean, literally, he couldn't walk for weeks and weeks. And, um, and back then, I was already, you know, I was a gluten-free, dairy-free person probably before any of us here. Yeah. I, I've been, it was since college, which was in the 80s. Wow. I had sausage fingers. I couldn't believe, I had very, very swollen hands. And I couldn't understand why at such a young age would I have these arthritic hands. So I started digging um, at UCLA, because where, that's where I went my undergraduate, at the Biomed Library there. And there, there was a thing about celiac and symptoms wow. similar to what I was going through, gut symptoms and my joints. So I just kind of like said, you know what? It doesn't hurt. I'm going to yeah. stop eating yeah. my pizzas right. and my donuts <laughs> that we all do. I mean, I'm telling you, I ate a lot of junk food back then. And sure enough, within like a week, changed my life. 
wow. change your life. And that's what we, you and I constantly preach about is we got to start from what we put in our body. Yes. Yeah. And I, always, I love that you mentioned water because I always say it's, you know, you, we can't get complex with supplements and treatments and there's some really cool stuff out there, but it starts with clean air clean water, clean food. And we're going to talk about food today at length, but it's so interesting because it can be quite simple in how you first approach. You mentioned water, and I know a lot of the listeners would be interested in know more. I'd love to know your take on, um, do you recommend patients test water? What kind of water do you drink? Tell us a little bit about water. Absolutely. So (laughs) this water here has been reverse osmos, you know, meaning, okay, so there's many different filtration systems. And um, I purify my water for many reasons. In Los Angeles County, we naturally have arsenic in our water. Mm -hmm. And arsenic for my body, my family's body, not good. Arsenic is one of the more toxic uh, metals that can cause havoc for the brain, for your um, immunity, for your kidneys, for your liver. So it's neurological for sure, neurological. So uh, I clean my water completely with a reverse osmosis unit. It's a countertop unit. And then from there, I structure it. And I know a lot of people don't know what structured water is. Um, If you go online to my website, next week, I'm literally doing a whole series on water. It's called my water series. Wow. So everyone wants to learn more about it, go to my website, drsuzanne.com. And that's Dr. Suzanne with an S, not a Z. And uh, you just, just basically put your name in, you know, um, he's right in the front. You're going to get, uh, in fact, how to make kimchi, a little recipe about that kind of stuff, about kimchi. Just put your name in, and next week you're going to get a series of, of water information. And um, structured water is very interesting. Structured water is the most natural water anyone can drink. And, you know, you've seen the rivers, and you've seen the creeks, and all the mountain water that, you know, in Colorado, you get such incredible water. Um, that the action of going through rocks and streams and flow and, and, uh, you know, literally turns, hairpin turns and all that, that creates structured water. And what structured water means is that the H2O, which is the water molecule, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. It, it binds to each other in a specific way. It creates a hexagonal shape. Mm -hmm. There's, they're hexagonal, hexagonal is there's, that means there's six atoms within the hexagonal water and that that hexagonal shape is what's called structured water. So the most important uh, or the best water is natural springs, right? That's right. what I'm talking about. But um, modern medicine, modern world, we don't have that. Yeah. Our water comes from pipes. Our water's treated. Our water's chemicalized. Yeah. Our water, in fact, when I'm when I'm purifying it with reverse osmosis, you lose that bond because the minerals in water is what creates also the resonance to create hexagonal water. Wow. That, that is the very powerful water because why? It goes into our cells much faster. Nature has beautiful, you know, has created some amazing things. And one is hexagonal water, structural water, and it goes into the cell much faster than regular H2O. Regular H2O you get from tap water. All right. Um, not only that, it improves your ability to function because you can detox better, right? Your energy level will go up. Um, your body's ability to use that as you know, in your mitochondria and to use water for dehydration, all of this, it really is the best water. Structured water to me is the best water. So I basically um, use reverse osmosis, but that ROS water is not structured. And I have a unit uh, that I've actually started, you know, my patients all get it and it's called vitalized water. And if you want, I'll show you the unit because I wasn't sure if we're going to talk about, but it's basically a- Love it. <laughs> I love it. I love, love it. show and tell. So this, yeah, is show, great. this is show and tell. This is a <laughs> picture called Vitalize Plus, cool. Vitalizer Plus. And all the people that um, basically, you know, if they want to use this, you use it with RO water. Uh-huh. or distilled water or regular drinking water, not tap water, because that's not clean. Right. And definitely if it's natural mineral water, you don't need to, because that's supposed yeah. to be a little bit more structured. But what I like about Vitalizer Plus is that it it's consistently will give you structured water. Wow. And um, it, it also remineralizes, remineralizes your 
RO water, reverse osmosis water, with this mineral basket. So it swirls. It's, when you, when you, when I do it, there's a, a vortex action, yeah. a tornado inside, right. and that is what creates the structure too, because it's creating a magnetic. It's magnetic water and oxygenated. So there's many, many different things that this unit can do, and um, I have ask the company and they've given my people a hundred dollars off on the unit because I think online it's like, I don't know, I don't know what it was, but all my people that are getting it, they get it a hundred dollars off. My assistant takes care of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys can, you could just email my assistant help at drsuzanne.com help at drsuzanne.com. And you just tell him, I want the vitalizer. He'll take care of it for you, but just tell him that you, you, you're, you're, you're a part of my, um, uh, tribe and they'll give, he'll give you a hundred dollars off. You can't find this anywhere online. And the company, because I sell, not sell, but I tell so much about this water just to all my patients, they've given me this opportunity to drop that price down for everyone. Awesome. I love it. Cause water is so key in the quality. And I oh, love yeah. that you mentioned so many patients ask, what should I do for filtration? And I love RO water because it's clean, but the minerals are depleted. So you have to find a way where you either take minerals extra or replete your water. So I think that's really important because especially the whole house filters, I don't know that there's a lot of options besides RO. That's the main thing on the market. So if someone wants their shower and their bath water all filtered, which is great, like I yeah. love clean water, but you really, you need to put those minerals back or you're drinking an acidic product. And when you put that acidic water in your body, you shut down enzyme processes and things that need a more alkaline environment. So love that you're talking about that. Did you know that I actually tested all of these waters out with an actual pH meter? Mm. And our water, you're absolutely right. It's actually acidic. Yes. It is not neutral. Right. Neutral is pH seven. Right. It's right. below. Wow. And alkalized, and, and of course, through the mineralized vitalizer, it goes up to like eight, eight something. Wow. So you automatically so right get up. alkaline, which is kind of what I usually drink if I can. I don't have the vitalizer yet, but I'm interested. So I love you that. Get one up, of love course it. you can. So water is very important. And, and because you're drinking much more uh, structured water, meaning it's, it goes into our cell more, you don't need to drink as much. Everyone tells me, oh, I don't need to drink eight glasses. I'm better at six. I'm fine. You know what? Your skin, yes. you want, like hydrated skin. Yeah, you live in high altitude, honey. And I'm telling you, it dries you out like crazy. And I live in hot, sunny California. So definitely dry skin. The one thing that I really recommend everyone to do is get a high grow meter. Yep. High grow meter, it's basically get any online anywhere. Mm -hmm. And this is 47%, which is actually pretty good. Yeah. You want to keep your house around 45 to 50. Don't do much more than 50 because then molds can come. Right, then you have mold issues, yeah. But below 40, 40 is the lowest. It's too dry. And that oh, yeah. means you're going to, the ambient air sucks water out of your skin. Yeah. It really, really does. And especially, again, a lot of my listeners are Colorado, Utah, all this area yeah. here, or Arizona, super arid. And, you know, it's funny because you, you and I love, like, anti-aging creams and products and things and, and things that really help us to stay youthful looking. But, honestly, hydration, I think, is the number one way that I – stay looking fresh and youthful if I, if it's possible, the hydration is number one. It's pretty, it's just like the right. clean air, clean water, clean food. We can do a lot of fancy lights, devices, um, procedures and, um, and creams, but really hydration is so critical. So I couldn't agree more with you. I love so that. We I all want to look young like you. <laughs> Honey, you're, I think I'm about 10 years older than you. Something like that, right? No, even more. Oh, I don't know, but you look like 26, so. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Tell you, you can spray water. You know, people don't realize after shower, and shower is very drying because if you, unless you filter a whole house, mm -hmm. and whole house filters are usually carbon, yeah. all right, carbon filtration. Carbon, again, is not something that will take out the mercury, the arsenic, uh, the uranium, this fluoride. It will not take out fluoride, but it will take out chlorides, uh, chlorine and chloramines and maybe larger cysts like um, I'm talking Protozoa about and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But uh, what you want to do is if you do that, you could just spray yourself with, that's what I do before yeah. I put my moisturizer on and all that yummy stuff. I spray myself with the vitalized water, oh, you know, yeah. and so you're hydrating, hydrating, and then you put it all on. 
a great, great idea. So we haven't even got to food yet. So kimchi has been your kimchi. story. I know, I remember before your book came out, you're like, Jill, I'm going to have this coming out. I want to talk about this. I'm like, I don't even know what it is, <laughs> but I love, I want to hear kind of the story because this is a traditional Korean food. And so there's this neat story of, of, of you and who you've been and, and some, some of your ancestry, and then also how this can be such a powerful healer. So tell me just a little bit about the history of kimchi and kind of how you got into the power behind fermentation. Absolutely. Thank you for asking that. So I'm, I'm from Korea, Seoul, Korea, mm -hmm. and I was born there and I lived there until I was 12. Uh, from the moment that I remember, in fact, my little, my grandma, my sweet grandma would feed me kimchi juice, white kimchi juice. What that means, there's no red pepper in it. And it's a fermented um, vegetable that all Koreans eat. And we, for thousands of years, Koreans would make this vegetable because in the wintertime, starting October up until like even May, it could be frozen. It'd be so, so frigid, frigid cold. There's no vegetation. There's no vegetables. So uh, in the olden times, that's what we used to do is that they would dig a hole, put a big earthenware, a pot in it, and then would make this vegetable with veg. And, and I'll tell you, the vegetables are very unique. Um, and the, the thing that I always say is that if, if you have ginger, garlic, ginger and garlic, Oh, yummy. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, ginger and garlic and sea salt and any veggie that you want to um, use, you will make kimchi. Wow. And what kimchi is, is that, any, so there's different, there's like 250 different kimchis in Korea. Wow. Um, today, I'm going to share with you three. But uh, any vegetable that you want, usually the crunchy kind and wow. that are juicy. Yeah. And when you salt it and brine it, what that does. Now, Koreans didn't know 2,000 years ago that salting, you know, did this, but they realized it's from trying and, and air, you know, trying it out and that it really would preserve the vegetables. So what salting does is it kills all the pathogenic bacteria, mm -hmm. viruses, as well as possibly parasitic. So, and fungi, of course, mold. So by brining properly at a certain amount of time and then mixing it with other types of vegetables, yeah. then you're creating the medium for lactic acid bacteria. Now, what is lactic acid bacteria? It is the, the um, lactic acid, acid loving bacteria. Now they love salt, salt, okay. but all the bad ones like Klebsiella, E. coli, streptococcal, they don't like salt and they actually die in salt. So wow. that's what the beauty of the balance between how salt will kill off the bugs. And then when you put all the veggies together and let it sit for a few days, you end up getting this lactic acid bacteria probiotic growth. And I'm talking about the diversity. You can have over a, a thousand different strains of probiotics, a thousand. Wow. Now, Jill, you know, we all talk about probiotics. We've been giving it to our patients. Yeah. And usually if we're lucky, we might have 24 strains. Right. I'm talking about a thousand, 900 to a thousand strains in a tablespoon of right. bacteria, of, of, of kimchi. Mm -hmm. So the diversity is high. Now we all know across the board, people in America, you know, in modern times, when you don't eat fermented food, you have very low diversity in the gut. And that is one of the biggest factors of immune deficiency. Yeah. I always say diversity is king. So this is exactly, and I, I've even taught to physicians, you know, when you give a probiotic of 10 or 20 or 26 strains, you could be creating monoculture, which is the exact opposite of what you want because you're giving these small amount. And yeah, they might've been studied strains, but there is no evidence that any regular lacto or bifidobacillus bacteria creates diversity. So really it has to, I always say you have to come back to food and fermented foods are some of the best. So, so you got interested. To insert, so what happened was this. Let me. I, did, I went to Korea because I went on, a, on my 50th year of my life. I went there with my family because my son wanted to go, and I couldn't believe how terrible everyone in Korea was eating. They wow. had every pastry shop, coffee shop, McDonald's, pizza parlors. Everyone, everyone eats crappy food. Okay. And I would. What I didn't realize is that. Why, what, what was concerning me was that they're eating so crappy, but everyone was very beautiful and skinny. Wow. Young people to old people. They're, the obesity level, I'd looked it up, 5.6. Wow. 5. America is up to close to 40. Unbelievable. All right. So what is going on? And I mean, modern times, yeah. they're eating the worst food. And every meal they eat kimchi. 
Wow. Every meal. Wow. Even with the tacos, they ate kimchi on the tacos. Yeah. So I realized back then, I'm like, this is really amazing. So when I came home, I became a kimchiologist. Wow. I just like dove into kimchi science because I didn't even know there was such a thing. I just ate it. Do I didn't it either. <laughs> you just know, right? It was like oh, it. just food that we ate, you know? Right. It didn't even occur to me. Uh, and I've been practicing natural medicine for so long. It didn't even occur to me. I just, I talk about it, but it wasn't like, you know what, I really want to know. Anyway, I found this out that there is so many power, so much power in kimchi as an antimicrobial agent, anti-inflammatory, antihistamine even, uh, very good for cholesterol, reducing triglycerides, reducing sugar level, wow. hemoglobin A1C, insulin, uh, in resensitizing insulin receptors, um, glutathione production, which is incredible. Uh, what else? Um, B subtle is there's so many different kinds of good bacteria. Your immunity is just skyrocket. And oh, skyrocket. Bacillus. Is, that, is that bacillus that you were mentioning? Oh, yeah, bacillus? yeah, because I'm a uh, huge I'm fan. Sorry, of, sorry bacillus. Yeah, no, that's okay. I want to make sure you, because uh, for our listeners, those are yeah. super probiotics, and those are actually some of the best for diversity, which makes sense of why you're getting increased diversity with this. And the other thing I wanted to stop it because. I have a population of patients like you do that have mold and MCAS and they have histamine issues. So there are a lot of fermentation products that they can't do, especially like kombucha, which I'm not a huge fan of. Tell me what the difference is with kimchi and why like it might be good for histamine. You know, they've done, Koreans, they've done the studies, you know, in Korea, there's the World Institute of Kimchi. The government has created a, 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 a you know, big, huge building where only scientists, they all they do is study kimchi. And what they found was that kimchi did not increase histamines in the body. Wow. And I think what they were saying is that because of the mineral content, huh? did you know that minerals hydrate you? Yeah. And when you're hydrated, you don't have histamine problems? Yeah, water right. is number one antihistamine, so that makes perfect sense. <laughs> That's right. And minerals we need for the cell salt. And then number two, there's a lot of nutrients, especially ginger and garlic, and also uh, phenols, um, polyphenols, that, are, that reduce histamine in kimchi. And that's the reason why they say, you know what, kimchi is not something that really stimulates um, histamine. Now, if you're allergic, if you're allergic to the red pepper, yeah. You know what I mean? Let's not eat it. Obviously. Right, right. But right. you can make kimchi without the red pepper. You know, you can change, um, make kimchi with the vegetables that you love and that your body loves and craves. You don't have to make it with the typical cabbage. Yeah. I don't tell people, in fact, in my book, The, um, the Kimchi Diet, uh, that book, I tell people to start with cucumber. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's talk about recipes and how, what's your favorite options for this? What would you recommend for people? I love well, this. I, you know, I realized when I came back from Korea and figuring out, I got to have everyone start eating kimchi. I realized through trial and error, I, I first told people to go in and get the kimchi at the store yeah. and cabbage one, which everyone knows. And that's Napa cabbage, Chinese cabbage, whatever you want to call it. Well, that cabbage made everyone very gassy. Oh yeah. <laughs> very bloated. And they were running to the bathroom all the time, you know, so too much tootin. And I said, you know what, I got to figure this out because I can't be telling people to do this. Yeah. And I figured out that all about FODMAP and yeah. figured out that the low FODMAP so is the best for the phase one. There's four oh. phases. Okay. So the low FODMAP is cucumber. So you start with cucumber. The second one is the uh, bok choy or mm -hmm. mustard greens. The third one is here, radish kimchi, Ooh. third one. Radish, and then the fourth is the regular cabbage one. So every two weeks, I have you make kimchi and you start inoculating yeah. your body, seeding your body little by little. And then you're not gonna have gas at all with cucumber, little by little. I mean, just a tablespoon yeah. to two tablespoons a day. And then you start increasing. And now I eat about a half of a cup a day, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe a little less. And I probably go up to about three to 400 billion CFUs a day is what I take in. Wow. Three to 400 billion. Now mm -hmm. remember, those supplements you get might be five, right. 10, 20. I'm right. doing hundreds of billions. Billions. That's so amazing. my God, you know, I've been, I've been asked, someone who, who, uh, who actually made a, um, a movie about fecal transplants, fecal implants. You know what those are, right? Yes. You know, to help with um, uh, a lot of uh, gut disorders, if, especially inflammatory gut disorders. But anyway, she wanted to use my stool. Yeah. 
because she felt that my the, with my diversity and the health of my gut that she would have a really good transformation. Yeah, you know, I'm telling you, that's that's what you need is you've got to find some if, if anybody wants or interested in uh, fecal tr in, implant, you know, transplants. That's what you got. You got to find someone who's got. I love that you're saying this and it's okay here we talk we can talk about anything and so if you and a lot of my patients ask about this there's good indications especially for C. diff colitis it's not yet labeled in the U.S. for like Crohn's colitis but there's lots of good evidence coming out but the funny thing is I've always said I've even again in lecture said you know what fecal transplants have amazing results there's a lot going on with the research but if it were me, I don't know that I'd pick anyone in the U.S. because our diet and our diversity is so low. So I understand that very well because I was like, I would want someone from like Papua New Guinea who had never been out, you know, been, been in a totally indigenous culture and never had any exposure to any of the processed foods. But that's pretty impressive that someone mentioned because it is, it's all about gut health and diversity and who in the U.S. really anymore has that unless you're eating fermented foods like kimchi. Exactly. So the first, again, Cucumber kimchi. There's my cucumber kimchi. Oh, that looks good. I'd like to try that. See, I've never tried it. So now I'm going to be, I'm going to have to give it a try. Um, question for you. What's your favorite? So. My favorite. It's a very, it's hard to say. When I travel and I come back home, I don't have any here today. I love water kimchi uh, uh, because I just drink the juice. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, tongshimi is an ancient way. Tongshimi came before, in fact, all these kimchis. These kimchis with the red and all that, yeah. it's more about three, three, 350 years old. Tongshimi is one of the older ones, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years old. And it's a radish and you make it with water. If you follow me on Instagram or on my Facebook page, I there's a lot about that. Oh, the kimchi diet group. You can go into the kimchi diet group and you'll learn. It's a, anyone can join. Um, it is a private group, but you, I teach you how to do all kinds of this on the kimchi diet group. Um, uh, Facebook I'll group. I'll put links on all of these for the people. Yes, but my tongshimi is my favorite because I can drink it quickly and it's not spicy and I it just soothes my gut. You know that there's such thing as a psychobiotics. You yeah. know, it really helps with your mood. GABA goes up, serotonin goes up. It really helps with even dopamine for focusing. A lot of these lactic acid, acid bacteria make make these good, good uh, neurotransmitters. And remember, we all have this gut brain connection, yeah. right? We want that. So whenever I go on a big trip or I'm, I don't fly anymore, you know, I've got my RV now. I know. <laughs> when I come back and I just want to settle down, I have some kimchi juice or eat some kimchi and uh, it settles me down so I can go like back home. So tell me this, is it an acquired taste? So what would you say? Thank is you. It, tell me a little about taste. What does it taste like? Um, so the taste is, as it ferments, now fermentation can take long, like sauerkraut, we all know sauerkraut, right? Please do not get the sauerkraut in the middle of the aisle where it's been literally zapped with heat. You yeah. need to go to the deli section and the outskirts and the sauerkraut there, because that's where it's really cultured. Sauerkraut takes about three to six weeks to make. Kimchi, two days, wow. sometimes even one, depending on the ambient temperature. You can eat kimchi within a day. Cucumber kimchi, you can start eating it the day you make it. Uh -huh. but what I do is I, I, you know, this, I have not even opened this yet. This was made about 10 days ago. I've not opened this. But um, once I can see that it's fermented within about a day or two, I pop it in the refrigerator. So it slows down the fermentation process. As it gets um, more and more days go by and it's in the fridge, it will turn slowly but it'll, it'll turn in a way where it becomes sour. Okay. The sourness is the acidity. Okay. When it's sour, that means the pH has gone down okay. and there's a lot more of the lactic acid bacteria. Okay. And you want that. Now, everyone asks me, what do I do about the smell? Uh -huh. Kimchi smells, you know how sauerkraut smells? Yeah. Kimchi, the reason why it smells is that there's a great deal of garlic. Uh -huh. Now, garlic to me is a superfood yes. all in of itself. Garlic. Yeah, let's okay. talk about garlic and ginger because that's some of the powerhouses in this, isn't it? These two, I, I'm like I said again, if you can get me ginger, garlic, and sea salt. This is sea salt. This is how big, this, I, this is wow. sea salt from Korea. You can get this online. And uh, where's my, um, oh, I wish, I wish, oh, if you don't, can't find the Korean one, just get kosher. Celtic sea salt, but it's got to be coarse. Yeah. It's got to be coarse, you know, make it 
Anyway, if you have those three ingredients and a veggie, uh -huh. you can make, you know, even cabbage, you can, eat, you can make kimchi anywhere. And in fact, listen, you don't even need to have any fire. I make kimchi the old ancient way where mm -hmm. there's no fire involved, just my hands and mm -hmm. cutting and then jarring it. That's mm -hmm. it. You don't, you know, some people use um, heat to make rice porridge to put it in there. You don't even need that. You really don't. I like to put um, apple or pear in it to give it a little bit of substrate food. Uh -huh. Bacteria needs food too. Yeah. yeah. So, what's beautiful about these two, especially these two, and why this is important, the flora, the microbiome from garlic and ginger is a big part of the microbiome you're making wow. in your kimchi. So all, every vegetable has its own unique microbiome, mm -hmm. your own unique flora. And you, you don't want to like, you know, wash it and zap it with hot water and, and boil it before you make your kimchi. You know how pickling, pickling is, everything is boiled. Yeah. There's, everyone should know pickling and pickles and pickled foods. There's no bacteria there. Got it. So don't, don't think that that's good food. Now you have nutrition, you've yeah. got fiber, you have minerals, you have lower levels of vitamin because you, you got to heat it, but you don't have bacteria. You need ferments. And this is a wild ferment, everyone. Wow. Wild so ferment. You don't add probiotics to that. You actually just go oh. purely from, okay. Yes. A lot of fermented foods, they add a right. starter. Right, right. Now, they've done, Corinne's done studying about that too. They studied that they add a starter and then one is a wild. What is wild? Again, you, it's all about the vegetables and yeah. you naturally allow the vegetables uh, that have the bacteria you know, on it to yeah. grow and, and multiply. With starter, they found that even at the end, after it's been fermented, the, 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 it doesn't change the diversity or it doesn't change even the number. Yeah. So don't even do it. Don't it's waste like your money. This flat. Well, this is so fascinating and so important mm -hmm. for the gut. So you what can see that this is all like, I don't know if it's bubble, yeah. it's bubbled up. Yep. I'm going to try and, oh, I hope it doesn't, because um, sometimes if you open it up, if you haven't opened it for a while, it, the pressure, yeah, I'm going to just see. Okay. This will be fun. Real live explosion. <laughs> oh, that was a little, uh, little gassy. Oh, look, do you see the gas? It just came yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. A little, little gas and. I love the smell. I love it. I love the smell, but everyone would say it smells kind of like, you know, someone chewed it around. But the truth of the matter is when you do fermentation, you are, are creating um, carbon dioxide gas as well. You know, there's gas and there's sulfur, sulfur uh -huh. in it from the, the garlic. Right. Um, and that creates a, the odor. But the fastest way to get rid of kimchi breath uh -huh. or, uh, is to eat garlic. Wow. Garlic is your, your um, antidote for, for, not garlic, ginger, ginger, excuse me. Ginger is the antidote for garlic. Oh. And when you make kimchi, you have to have two to one ratio. And that's, that's my, my ancient, my, my entire lineage from my mother's grandmother's side. This, all that, all my kimchi recipes come from them. Wow. And my ancestors. And it's two, two, um, uh, ratio two to one. So it's uh, two parts of garlic to one part of ginger, ginger when you're making kimchi. And that's when you're going to get the most amazing tasting kimchi is that two to one ratio. But I wanted to talk about the garlic and why garlic is important. All right. I learned something about garlic from my mother, uh, very, very young age. When my mother was 20 years old, just about 20, I think it's 20. Um, that's where the Korean war was happening. And um, she lived in Incheon, which was north, much closer to North Korea. Um, although Incheon is in South Korea right now, but back then they, there wasn't a DMZ line, demilitarized zone. There wasn't such a thing back then because it was the wartime, right? They created it later in the late 50s, I think. So anyway, my mother told me a story about a, a, a girl. They had borders. My mom lived um, in a nice house and there had many rooms. There, so they had, they had borders and it was a woman and a daughter and the daughter got cholera during the war. Oh, wow. Now cholera, most people don't really know what cholera is, but it's dysentery, it's amoebic, dis, uh, excuse me, bacterial dys, dysentery, um, vibrio cholera, which is the bacteria. And most people die from it. 
yeah. because you lose everything. You got just water coming out of you. Um, and um, the scene is terrible. And, and most people and young people um, and children and adults, everyone dies from cholera. Or at least they did in the past. Yes. yes. My mother said that the mother of that, do- that girl got five to six cloves like this, crushed it up, every day gave her that over a cup over a cup of garlic this wow. little girl would take and it saved her life wow and i'm not saved surprised her. you know suzanne when i'm treating gut dysbiosis and disorders garlic is probably my favorite i use Go a lot you. of things but when there's tough bugs like methane or there's a uh, club ciella, or there's these tough strains i love garlic for that reason because it's so powerful Again, Which one do you use? Do you use supplements or do you use real garlic? Well, I love using real garlic, but patients aren't as compliant. So I use the Allison extract, the Alamed or Alamax. They're both the same one, the real powerful. It's 450 um, milligrams of Allison extract. So it's a very high potency um, garlic. I'm glad you use that because, because it's easier to take. Yeah. There's no doubt. Um, even with Allison, it will, Allison, it will give you a little odor. Yeah. But you know what? I've got a story for you for that one. Yeah. I came back from, uh, where is that? Um, uh, down in Cancun, there's a little place, a little place near Tulum area. I went and I went swimming in this El Cenotes, which is like a, a large uh, cavern with water. I mm-hmm. went swimming in, it was a beautiful, beautiful place. But when I came out, the mosquitoes got me. Oh. And I didn't know anything about back then dengue. But anyway, I come back home and I realized I was super sick because I had, you know, like bullseye, you know, yes. bullseye yes. Um, from, from a tick bite. Yeah. I had five of them on my body. Wow. Five. And I was really suffering fast. And so, um, you know, I've got vials. I don't know. If you, you know that I do muscle testing. Yeah. And I have this vials and I rarely get my tropical disease vials. Yeah. When I, in America, we don't get tropical disease. Right. But I ended up scanning my vials and I ended up getting dengue fever, dengue. Oh my gosh. It freaked me out, of course. And I was working that it was already Monday morning because I flew back on Sunday and, and I started downing allicylin. I'm like looking, what is going to help me? What's going to help? What's going to help me? I'm taking five, 10, what am I saying? 10 allicylin gels Uh three times a day. That day I stunk like garlic all day. The patient's (laughs) crazy. But I'm going to tell you that that large, like about five inch bullseye became yeah. a, about, a, about a half of a dollar. Wow. It shrunk up that so fast yeah. with Alice Island. So I believe exactly what you're saying. Yeah. It works beautifully. Yeah. And, and that's, we're lucky we have this available. We're we so are. lucky. And it's, you know, a lot of times there's um, bacterial overgrowth, but there might be also be fungal overgrowth or viral loads. And I feel like the Allison extract is good for viral, fungal, bacterial, protozoa. It's just, in fact, I was at the Swiss Mountain Clinic last year, not this year, but hopefully again next year. And one of my favorite things, these are allopathic, regular medical doctors from Germany that treat people there. And they use garlic in many forms, including garlic mm-hmm. enemas to treat protozoa, so parasites. Oh. So they use garlic freely. Yeah, I know it sounds really awful. Uh, we don't, I don't yet use them frequently here, but they, the part of their protocol for treating parasites in Germany and Switzerland was garlic. Well, you know, you could do, um, it's called um, mulin, yep. you know, garlic drops for the yep. ear. Ears, exactly. You can do it for the vagina. Right. So right. Uh, I wouldn't put in the eyes or right. the right. nose. <laughs> exactly, oh, exactly. Speaking of the nose. If you have white kimchi, meaning without red pepper, use the liquid, the kimchi juice, and you can swipe your nose for chronic rhinitis, chronic sinusitis wow. infections. Absolutely. It's in wow. the internet. You can find it online about it. So don't use a red pepper one, but regular. Yeah. There's a bacteria called Lactobacillus sacchii that's in the juice. And what they're finding is that the scientists found out that when you get these chronic sinusitis or rhinitis yeah. issues, what they're lacking is that bacteria. Wow. So you're replenishing it. Mm-hmm. And oh, you don't have to go all the way back like yeah. you're doing a COVID test. Yeah. You just have to put it right in the front and it'll just multiply and go up there. Wow, that's a great, great pearl. Gosh, I love talking to you, Dr. Suzanne. This has been so fun. What about some last minute tips on, just to end with some tips, we talked about immune boosting foods. I love garlic and ginger. Is there anything else you want to share about immune boosting foods in general? 
You know, when I look at immune boosting, um, I, I look at many different, you got to look at, at the macro level to the micro level. When I do macro, I'm talking about what kind of foods, right? That's yeah. macro, what you can yeah. eat. But I also look at what foods have specific ingredients yeah. in it. Yeah, right? so the, the things that we all know about right now because of COVID is about zinc and selenium. And, and zinc is a very difficult mineral to find mm -hmm. in food. Uh, the highest level you'll find is in oysters, but I don't recommend a lot of oysters because you, to get like a decent level, you need to have three oysters per day. Three oysters mean you get about 30 milligrams of zinc, but oysters could have mercury in it and it could also have um, fr uh, diantamida, uh, what, what not diantamida? Fragilis, yeah. That's uh, fragil, yeah. There's these little, not di diantamida, but uh, flagellates, dinoflagellates, which is an ocean um, animal, you know, like single cell yeah. animal, but it can cause all kinds of bad problems in your gut and your, and your body. So instead of that, I, I say zinc, you want to take food uh -huh. and the, the higher levels of zinc will be in protein, animal protein. So um, get some protein in you, you know, and, and there's a lot of vegans here. If not, then I highly recommend a chelated zinc, chelated zinc, um, because you take supplement wise and I, I when it comes to zinc do not take it empty stomach because right. some people get nausea yeah you could even vomit from it I take it start slow anywhere from 10 to 15 milligrams and go up to like three times a day to boost your immunity and we know that zinc is very good for um, even uh, they even talk about zinc in combination with um, using with drugs for yeah. COVID you know but I don't recommend the drugs I just you know, do it all naturally. We can all do it. If you kimchi, the studies show that kimchi actually kills COVID. I don't know if you know that. I, it, they are finding that it, your immunity builds so that the COVID goes down. They also found that it stops the um, opening of the ACE2 receptors. Kimchi does. So it's important that, you know, get kimchi in you. Um, I talk about zinc, selenium. Selenium, uh, what are foods that are high in selenium? Um, uh, sardines, yeah, sardines. Yeah. Uh. Yep. I love sardines because of, it's very high in RNA as well, mm -hmm. which is really good for the brain. Um, and, and then uh, Brazil nuts, you can do, uh. you know, for a few of them. I always peel off the, the skin, Yeah. peel it off because that can get really moldy yeah. um, with, regarding that. And then foods that build your immune system. So. We talked about pro protein is the number one way to build your immunity. People don't realize that. Right. All of your immune boosting, uh, immune boosters, let's say, you know, immunoglobulins, mm -hmm. it's protein. Yeah, all right. exactly. White blood cells, natural killer cells, yep. all protein. protein. So you've got to get your proteins up. And if you're vegan, I highly recommend getting, um, getting amino acid treatment, not treatment, but amino acid supplements. I take super eight aminos. These super eight aminos have the eight essentials and it will build their building blocks for your immune system and even your gut, your yeah. brain, your transfers, all of that. So um, protein is, is very, very key. High, high, high. So when it comes to herbs, I like using with viral herbs, I use olive leaf and andrographis. Yeah. Olive leaf and andrographis. Virographis is the one that I get from, from Zymogen, but they are both immune yeah. boosting, but also it, it quelches the over hypersensitivity yeah. reaction that you might have in COVID. You know, when they have that, um, the, um, uh, what do you call it, storm? Yes, mm -hmm. I've storm. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It quelches that, it keeps it from happening. So you don't get so super hyperimmune reactive and you don't get that inflammatory, hyperimmune inflammatory reaction. So olive leaf and as well as um, andrographis, and these are both natural herbs. And yeah. those are both that you can take long-term. I find long-term, what is long-term? Mm, months to two months, you know, yeah. if you need no, it. Totally. Like that. Because some of the other ones like echinacea and some of the, they're better for pulsing or short-term. I don't recommend them long-term. So totally yeah. agree with you on that. And I love that you mentioned aminos because I think I've, like you, I've taken aminos for years and I am not a fan of the BCAAs, which is branch chain aminos. It's just three of them. So I like, just like you, I want the whole spectrum of amino acids. I like thorn amino complex, but there's others. Claire has one. You So um, yeah. it's really good to get the full spectrum and, um, and get those every day if possible. Absolutely. Lovely. Absolutely. And um, there's a, there's another supplement that I take. It's a natural ingredient mm -hmm. called Shilajit. 
you know what that is, Jill? Shilajit? Yeah. A lot of people haven't heard about it. Yeah, it comes from the Himalaya. And in this is ancient goo. I call it ancient goo because uh -huh. between the rocks in the Himalayan mountains, this black type of exu, it's like, it's like exu, it oozes this kind of like, it almost looks like, um, like oil, uh -huh. but it's thicker than oil, like honey. It's uh -huh. really honey. And what, th what they found was it's an ingredient of, um, you know, old, uh, old minerals, um, the trees and plants and woods, you know, roots, all this mixture. Wow. <laughs> and, it's, and what I mean by ancient, I mean like millions of years old. Yeah. And what the Himalayans um, and the Tibetans and um, people that live there have found is that, and this, they've studied this extensively in India as well, is that all of these little ingredients that are in it is an adaptogen. Yeah. It's an immune builder. It's amazing for high altitude sickness. Uh -huh. uh, it's incredible for activating mitochondria function. You know, I wrote the book Mighty Mito, so yeah. energy is all about. And that's one of the nutrients that I talk about in my book, in the Mighty Mito book. And shilajit, you take a tiny little bit and you just mix it in water. You would think that it's like oil, you know, crude oil, because it yeah. looks, it kind of smells funky like that, but it's water soluble. Wow. It's not oil. There's no oil really in it. You, yeah. you put a tiny little, like a pea size um, and mix it in and you just drink it and it, you can feel all your cells like opening up and You're excited for that energy. Oh my gosh. It really is. What amazing pearls. What exciting stuff on kimchi. I learned a lot. And where Thank is the best you. place for people to find more information about you? Repeat your website and then where to get the book. Sure, sure. At uh, my website is Dr. Suzanne, D R S U S A N N E dot com, Dr. Suzanne dot com. Um, I'm available on Instagram. I post a lot now. Right now, I'm posting a lot about my RV trips and stuff, which is a lot of fun. And uh, how those beautiful rocks, I just came back from Zion, you know, and oh, yeah. rice and those red canyon rocks was just infrared energy, you know, charging my body up. It was fabulous. Um, so you can find me on Instagram and then also, um, where else? Like I said, if you just, you know, put your name in and you could, you, there's, there's a pop-up that comes up and it has a little information about kimchi and the recipe for the cu cucumber kimchi, wherever that is, um, you'll be able to make your own this week awesome. during your, your Labor Day uh, weekend. And, um, and then my book is available on Amazon. Perfect. Amazon. Um, all my books are available on Amazon. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I am so, so glad to have you. We will have to do this again sometime. Yeah, let's see yeah. the, the book. So if you want to learn all about kimchi, I love it. <laughs> Look at that gorgeous smile. Um, thank you for taking your Friday before Labor Day with us. And we're so grateful for you, friend. And just wish you, I hope you have a beautiful weekend. And um, we will be sure and share this. I'll give you links so you guys can watch it again. And um, thanks again. I so appreciate you, Jill. Jill, you are major to me, a rock star mm. in, in our world of natural, natural health and medicine. And I really appreciate you inviting me here. Thank you so much for letting me just share a little bit about what I love and what I'm, I'm passionate about. You are so welcome. We will talk soon, my friend. I love